Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. For this review, we will return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. This is going to be review number 10 or so involving these guys, if memory serves me correctly. And this brewery has really made its name when it comes to the big Imperial Stouts. And it's one of those that we're going to have a look at today. And I have to say, this is one that I am quite curious about because it's it's a slightly different version of one of their stouts that I've tried already. So for this review then, we are going to head a little bit south of me here in Lund to Malmö and we're having a look at yet another beer from Nerd Brewing. So this one is another version of the Imfix, an imperial milk stout coming in at 10.5% ABV and this one is the Vanilla Macchiato edition. So a wee while back, a few months back, I think I just don't know when I would have reviewed that beer, but I reviewed the Caramel Macchiato edition of this beer. So uh, yeah, curious to see how the Vanilla Macchiato edition turns out. But as you'll know if you've watched the channel for any length of time, I'm a huge fan of milk stouts and also of coffee stouts. So I know that the base stout that's in here is really nice. So I'm curious to see how the vanilla comes out in this one. But yeah, this beer was released as part of the Local Osmoskalik assortment through Systembolag here in Sweden for February of 2021. And I think I paid about 80 Swedish kroners for this one. So that translates to roughly about eight euros, somewhere in the region of like seven pounds, yeah, just a little bit over seven pounds. And uh, in dollars, it would be maybe, you know, $8.75 or something like that. So uh, yeah, I think fairly decent for an Imperial Stout actually. But uh, yeah, very, very curious to see how this one turns out. Like I said, nice to return to Nair Brewing after what feels like quite a little while. It's been a good few months actually, since I've reviewed a beer from these guys and they've got another one coming out in the March lot that I've ordered as well. So yeah, definitely cool to feature these guys on the channel once again, and hopefully you'll see some more beers from these guys throughout 2021 as well. But um, yeah, let's go for it then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from their brewing before and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Nerd Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So Nerd Brewing, as I mentioned to you already, are based in Malmö and the company was founded by Hannah Scruber and Karen Carlson back in 2015 when they had their premiere at the Malmö Bull and Whiskey Festival. So both of these guys were big beer enthusiasts and they just wanted to kind of get into the industry in some way. Um, Hannes had been a home brewer for a very long time and he also got very good feedback on his beer so this really inspired him to go for it and turn professional. So he comes from a background in software development and takes care of the brewing side of things while Karen was an entrepreneur and she was a trader in the IT industry and she managed the business side of the brewery although she's no longer part of the company. But they started up with a very modest production and they've now become one of the most highly decorated breweries in Sweden through Untapped and they still are. I think I don't know if they're number one still but they are definitely within the top couple of breweries here in Sweden. Um, but pretty much all of their beers are brewed at the Lila Ulfabrik in Chad Beer. Uh, factory, uh, which is in Rosengård in Malmö, and uh, there's basically a collective company um, these days actually, where um, you know it's the Lila Ulfabriken is the, the the parent company if you like, and then uh, Lila Ulfabriken. Um, Chad Beer and Nair Brewing are all different brands of this uh, particular company, if you like. Um, and I think, you know, Elma Levin have also been getting heavily involved in this as well. So I'm not sure whether they will become part of the kind of Lila Ulfabriken family, if you like. Um, but uh, this brewery, as I said to you, have made their name when it comes to these big, heavy Imperial Stouts. That is Hannah's favourite style of beer. But they have been experimenting a little bit recently with, you know, IPAs. And um, they've also, they've done quite a few IPAs that have gone out on cask around the city, actually, or keg I should say they've all gone out on keg around Malmö uh, but they've also released some barley wines the barley wine that I reviewed from from these guys I was very very impressed with and they've also released an IPA actually which I picked up 
over in uh, Copenhagen at one stage. Um, but other than some beer festivals around Sweden, it was actually very difficult to get a hold of the Nair Brewing beers for quite a long time. But since 2018, they started selling their beers in Sistembolaget and there, there are fairly regular releases coming out of there. But as of February 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 80 different kinds of beer. And very recently, they actually released uh, their first two barrel-aged beers, which I might still be able to get a hold of the next time I go over to Copenhagen. I'll need to see about that, actually. Um, and for, I was going to order them, but unfortunately, um, I think Shios might have sold out of them when because um, I got trapped in Scotland because of this whole COVID-19. So that was a bit of a shame. I think I missed the first two barrel releases from these guys, which I would have been interested in. But hey-ho, that's just how it goes sometimes. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Nerd Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. So one of the things that I would point out about Nerd Brewing is that, you know, you see under here Nerd Brewing um, open source beer. So you can actually go on the Nerd Brewing website and get the recipes for these stouts that they're doing. Um, Hannes, of course, is, um, you know, a very, very nice guy. You can check out my Meet the Brewery segment I did with him as well. And uh, yeah, you know, he's very open to answering emails and things like that about his beers and stuff like that, but he's very busy. So yeah, just be aware of that if you do end up contacting him. But a very, very nice guy. And uh, he, he, you know, it was great of him to do the interview and stuff with me and definitely cool to uh, support his brewery and uh, try his beers because he's bloody good at these imperial stouts but there you can see on the bottom corner of the beer there is the nerd brewing symbol there and as you can see it's got that kind of wax top there it's got that um trademark wax top from these guys but yeah um 330 milliliter bottle 10.5 percent the infix imperial milk stout that is the other thing a lot of the names of these beers are based on programming things um but um uh, yeah imperial milk stout vanilla macchiato edition I think this should be quite nice. So um, yeah, I think this beer was produced back in, um, I think this beer was originally produced back, there we go, I think I've got it this time. One of the things with these wax tops, oh, Disney want to go, come on. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell you what, we're going to pause. All right, guys, welcome back. Finally managed to get the thing off the top of it. I actually used a knife and put a kind of, you know, cut my way around it. Because usually that's the way to get into these wax tops. I did actually cut around. You can see where on the bottle I've done that just in here. But apparently that wasn't enough to... Um, to get through it so yeah need to remember that for the next one is to i maybe need to use a tooth knife and just like saw around it before starting the video i usually do that with the wax tops it's just you know give them a little bit of a saw beforehand before we open them up but this one did not want to open uh so yeah <laughs> that's the only thing about these wax tops they're a bit annoying in that sense so uh yeah let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste and then Oh, so quickly, before the head disappears, you can see this one, about a quarter to a third finger of a frothy, very dark tan head there. That's going to fade away and just be nothing very, very quickly. But, um, yeah, it looks very, very nice. Um, yeah, does this one contain wheat? No, it doesn't. It's oats and lactose in this one. So, yeah, should be quite nice. Let me just put that back there because of my OCD. And there we go. So, yeah. Now, finally, we've got the beer <laughs> out of the bottle and into the glass so there we go so you saw that the head when this one poured as we saw was a uh, um about a two-third finger not a two-third finger a one-third finger of a frothy very very dark tan head you can see that's just faded away and it's left a very very kind of nice thin ring around the edge of the glass and a nice clear surface there there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the um the one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there and a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head. The carbonation actually did sound as if it was fairly active when we opened the beer up. But as you would expect, this one's poured a lovely dark kind of ebony rosewood colour, which is what you'd expect from an imperial stout, of course. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty damn awesome. So see if we shine the light through this one, it does have a wee tiny hint of a kind of Coca-Cola 
coloured edge to it, but um, yeah, it certainly looks the part absolutely of an imperial stout. Remember, the colour of your beer is dependent on two things usually. Uh, one, the type of malts that you use, and then two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, thus you get a darker colour, um, but it is dependent in the first instance on exactly what type of malts that you're using. But uh, yeah, in terms of an imperial stout, this uh, beer does not look, uh, does, you know, it doesn't do anything surprising in terms of its appearance. So um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. You can see this is going to be a bit of a thick beast. You can see from the lace in there. But yeah, let's take a look at that aroma and see how we go. Ooh, that smells very, very nice. One of the things I always loved about the, the Nerd Brewing beers is that they've just got a little bit of a kind of roasted edge to them. And it doesn't always come out in the aroma, and some of them it does, but quite a few of them are very, very smooth and very, very sweet in the aroma. But then you just get that little roasty kind of edge on these beers that lets you know, yeah, this is a Nerd Brewing Stout. It's kind of their signature, if you like. It's one thing I've always picked up from these um, from these Nerd Brewing beers. But um, yeah, the aroma of this one, I think, is very, very nice. I mean, straight away, what you'll notice about this one is just the... the the sweetness of the coffee and the smoothness of everything else that's underneath it. It's a beautiful, beautiful smelling beer. Maybe I'm enjoying this one a little bit, kind of, uh, so, you know, maybe I'm enjoying it so much because it's been a good few months since I've had one of these Nerd Stouts, actually. It's been too long, to be quite honest with you. But, um, yeah, it smells lovely. So, yeah, let's take a little bit of time and just, um, and just break this down. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. So, um... Straight away with this beer, you can smell that nice roasty backbone. I know that Hannes likes to use special bee malt in, uh, in these Imperial Stouts, and you can smell that there. It's got a backbone of a really kind of well-fired bread crusty sort of thing in there. There's a wee bit of a kind of brown bready, sort of wholemealy bread kind of thing going on. But yeah, for me, the backbone of this beer is the, the kind of roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust there. Just a bit of brown bread sitting on top of that. You get a good bit of chocolate out of this beer as well. Um, I would say, what are we going to say in terms of cocoa? Um, it's interesting actually because you've got the vanilla in here remember so the chocolate actually you get a bit of the kind of darker you know high cocoa chocolate the 80% sort of thing and you get a bit of that out of this beer but you also get a good little bit of a kind of milky chocolate hit out of this beer too which is interesting that would be because of the vanilla being in there so yeah you get a mix of kind of milky chocolate and a mix of um, kind of darker high cocoa chocolate actually so I really like how um, I really like how that whole thing um, goes together in this beer. There is a bit of brown sugar for me as well. I can definitely smell a wee bit of a sort of treacly molasses sort of thing, but it's not overly prominent. I'm getting just a little bit of brown sugar out of this one, which is quite nice. And of course, you can pick up a few um, kind of undertones with this beer. There's a little bit of woodiness in there, and there's a wee bit of nuttiness as well, which is good. Um, yeah, definitely a wee bit of nuttiness, this one. I'd say the nuttiness is a little bit more kind of prominent than the, the sort of woody undertone, if you like. Um, but this beer just goes together really nicely. You can definitely smell, um, you can definitely smell, how would you say, like the sort of smoothness of the oats. You can definitely smell that and the lactosey kind of side of things. You can definitely smell, it's a weird thing to say, but you can definitely smell the sort of thickness um, in this beer, actually. But I've got a feeling just from watching it kind of move around, it might be quite a slick imperial stout, this one, in a lot of ways. But um, yeah, the aroma out of this beer is just is lovely. The elephant in the room that we've not mentioned though, on purpose, is the uh, the coffee. Now, as I've told you in previous reviews, coffee is uh, probably you know it's it's one of my favourite, probably my favourite um, adjuncts to put in beer. Um, I don't drink coffee. I actually, just, I don't drink coffee normally at all. Um, just something I've never got used to. But I love it as an adjunct in beers. Um, you know, coffee beans are almost as complex as hops. You know, when it comes to coffee beans, they can be grown all over the world. So you know, your soil compositions, your water compositions can have a real effect on the beans themselves. Uh, and then, of course, the biggest factor you have with coffee beans is the mazel, the MASL, the meters above sea level. Apparently, the higher that you grow it, um, the more likely are to get you know big aromatic and big kind of fruity flavors and things like that out of coffee beans so coffee beans just you know they're they're, they're just such an interesting adjunct to put in beers you get indonesian coffee you get colombian you know ecuadorian coffee brazilian coffees as well and there's you know ethiopian rwandan and all of these kind of things so coffee beans are you know an awesome awesome adjunct 
to uh, to put in beers definitely but when it comes to the coffee in this one what i get out of this is actually quite um the coffee that you get with this one comes across as quite aromatic and it comes across as having a bit of a kind of fruity character as well to it. Um, I don't get too much in the way of roastiness um, out of the coffee in this, in fairness. You have to take the aroma in quite deeply just to get a wee hint of the roastiness out of the beer, uh, out of the coffee side of things. Um, but the coffee sits on top of all the other elements that I've kind of mentioned before, actually. It's a very kind of infused note. But yeah, the coffee beans have... Um, the coffee beans have a really, really nice, just big aromatic note to them. They've got a nice sort of um, floral note in there as well. Very, very aromatic. And there's definitely a wee bit of a kind of red fruity sort of thing to them as well. Some lovely big, um, how do you say? There's a lovely big kind of um, red, you know, there's there's just a lovely big kind of um, sort of raisiny note to them. There's a bit of a kind of plummy kind of thing going on as well. Um, yeah, the, the, the coffee for me has a good little bit of a fruity character to it. So yeah, big aromatic, big kind of fruity notes out of the coffee here. Um, very, very nice, I have to say. Um, so yeah, the aroma of this beer is, and the malty kind of uh, adjuncty side of things goes together um, really, really nicely. So yeah, lovely stuff. Um, the more that you smell of this beer, the more you get used to it and you get more of the kind of vanilla coming out as well. I think the vanilla takes a little bit of time just to kind of show its head in this beer, to be honest with you. But yeah, it works really, really nicely. I'm for sure the aroma of this is lovely. But yeah, on the um, hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there's a nice... Uh, some back corners of the palate, and the kind of back corner of your nose, I should say. Really, you know, my my brain is going these days, guys. My brain is absolutely dying. Uh, <laughs> saying stuff, I always seem to mix up the my, my things for the the flavour and the the aroma profiles. Oh, daft, wake up! Um, but yeah, on the at the back of the nose, you definitely get a nice wee bit of the earthiness out of the hops in this one for sure. But again, there's quite a big floral presence to this beer on the hoppy side of things. And I think that builds a good bridge with the coffee. Again, if you age this beer a little bit, which you can do because it's a 10.5% imperial stout, the hops will kind of gradually drop out of this one. Um, so you definitely get a bit, a good bit of floral aromaticity out of the beer. There's a lighter grassiness in there as well, but then you've got some really nice, just juicy, fruity characteristics out of the beer. So for me, um, there's a good little bit of um, raisiny sharpness to this one. You've got a nice kind of... Um, you do have a nice little bit of a kind of more juicy plummy character in there too um, and there's definitely some black uh, sort of sharper blackberries coming out of this one too so i'd be quite curious to know what um i'd be really curious to know what hop it is they've used in this i could look it up actually so i'll need to do that after the review look up what hops been used in this one but um yeah the aroma out of this beer i have to say it's really really nice so as i always say take a little bit of time and just uh, enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it but uh, i think this one is going to be pretty nice so let's taste this then so this one is another version of the infix um the vanilla macchiato edition coming in at 10.5 percent abv and imperial milk stout from their brewing in malma here in skjone in the south of sweden let's get stuck in slange skull cheers Yeah, <laughs> Hannes has still got it. There you go. That's a lovely beer once again, though. It is very, very nicely done. Um, what can I say? Um, where can we start with this? Um, it just it gets a big thumbs up from me once again. It's, it's, it's really nice to go back to these beers after a while. Um, I think, actually, come to think of it, I can't remember if the last Nerd Brewing beer that I reviewed was one was actually one that I bought because Hannes, when I did my interview with Hannes last year, um, he he gave me a bunch of beers to review and then I didn't have anything from them for a wee while actually. Um, but yeah, um, the beers are you know just they're they're really pretty damn nice. I have to say it's it's nice to go back to one of these after not having had it for a while. I think you kind of appreciate it a little bit more if you do that, but. Just another just solid solid one from from there and it's not a surprise these days they're, they know what they're doing yeah 
lovely, lovely stuff. <laughs> so, where to start with this beer then? So, what I said earlier about it being a really nice, you know, having a bit of slickness to it, it definitely has that. Definitely has a good little bit of that. Um, so, let's just kind of start from the base up then. Straight away with this beer, you get that nice kind of roasty, toasty, bread crusty quality just blanketing the middle of your tongue. And that um, that works together really, really nicely. Um, so, yeah, the, how do you say, um, the, you can definitely feel that roasty, toasty, bread crusty, special bee type thing just forming the backbone of the beer. And that's in the middle third of your palate, and that spreads, it gets a bit more intense on the back third of your palate. So, on top of that, you definitely get a nice bit of a kind of more bready note there, but the bready note, I would say, is actually quite thin on this one. There's not too much of that kind of sitting there. Um, and then, you start to get um, a bit of the, the um, you can feel the sort of coffee notes coming out of the beer as well, actually. So, this beer, as I was kind of saying earlier, the thing that you always get with these nerd, nerd beers is that kind of toasty, roasty toasty edge to them, and you definitely get a bit of that out of this beer for sure. Yeah, the, but this one's definitely one of the kind of smoother and slightly sweeter ones, I think, that I've come across from there brewing, um, definitely. So yeah, um, as I say, backbone of the beer, roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust. There's a nice sort of smooth, um, there is a nice sort of smooth uh, brown bready note kind of sitting on top of that, which I really really like as well um, and then in the middle of your palate you can feel lots of different things coming out so yeah if you go to that border region between kind of middle and back third of your palate you definitely get a bit more of an intense very very roasty black malty type thing um, on that border region there and then when you go into the back third of your palate again you still get a bit of a roasty toasty grainy note but you can feel a bit of breadiness just kind of thickening up there a little bit so the back third of your palate is distinctly kind of thicker than the the middle third of your palate and it's interesting because the coffee in this beer for me kind of sits it kind of sits on top of that border region and it sort of um it kind of sit, it kind of goes over that region and just kind of fills in the thickness there and it just gives you a gradual transition kind of moving over the top of the middle third of your palate so the coffee actually comes across as quite similar to what you're picking up in the aroma it's a very aromatic coffee for me i'd be curious to know exactly what coffee beans they're using in this if it's from one of the local roasteries or something like that but yeah the um the the coffee that you get with this has got a lovely big aromaticity to it um, and it's more aromatic i think towards the back like it kind of says the coffee sort of if this is the border region the coffee kind of starts up a bit back here and then it comes forward to about the middle the very dead center of your palate it's very aromatic back here and as you move kind of further forward you'll notice there is a bit some of the roastiness comes out of the back here as well but it's very very aromatic and I think it hits its most aromatic almost in the middle and then it just gradually gets more and more kind of fruity and it's got a wee citrusy edge to it as well um, and you didn't, I didn't pick up the citrusy edge in the aroma come to think of it but the kind of red fruity notes out of the coffee are just kind of sitting there but yeah the coffee the intensity of the coffee just drops away as you come forward on the middle of the palate there so that's um, quite interesting that is quite interesting for sure um, so yeah that's, it's, it's really interesting just how that goes together. So yeah, that coffee kind of stops in the dead center of the palate. And then as we see underneath that, you've got the coffee kind of coming in like this. Then you've got the, the roasty well-fired bread crust in there. You've got the sort of brown bready notes. Then you start to get the kind of chocolatey side out of the spirits. So like quite a dry, almost charred kind of chocolate that you get in this beer. And that kind of sits just on top of those notes. But the chocolate definitely comes across as more of a kind of higher percentage cocoa chocolate in the beer for sure but the vanilla starts to come out a little bit more on the front half of that front third of your palate um, definitely but the vanilla doesn't play as big a role in this beer um, as I was expecting it to to be honest but then again it's you know it's the macchiato it's, it's described as a kind of macchiato stout so that's an interesting point to uh, to make about this one as well to be honest
And for me, what the oats are doing in this is quite interesting as well, because it feels like the oats, the oats are kind of sitting right in the middle of the palette there. And um, so you can feel that on top of that kind of chocolate, you know, you've just got a bit of oaty presence there. And the oats, of course, I don't think are contributing too much to the flavour, if you like. They're more kind of dealing with the mouthfeel and just, you know, smoothening the beer out, just kind of thickening it up a little bit. So they're also giving you a few, they're also kind of playing around with the chocolatey notes there as well. And it's kind of on the front edge of that oaty part of the palette that you, that you get the vanilla as well. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting how everything in this beer is very, very layered and there's different, you know, different things going on in different parts of the palette here. Um, so yeah, it's, an, it's just another really, really interesting beer. And that's what you always get with these nerd brewing stouts is you get really good layers of complexity. And I think that's, you know, that's part of the reason why they are so well regarded. You will get one or two kind of uh, sort of woody notes pushing out of the underneath yeah, all of those flavours a little bit later on. There are, if you go to the centre of your palate, then just move forward, there is a little bit of a kind of nutty character um, to it as well, which I think is pretty damn nice. So, yeah, the, the kind of undertones and everything that this beer has going on are very, very interesting as well. Um, but, yeah, let's focus on the hoppy part of it then. So, in the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of the earthiness in there as you move further forward. The earthiness does stay there for quite a little bit, but as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate, you've got a nice big sort of floral aromatic note out of this one. So um, yeah, I feel that that's, it does it does just give you a wee bit of kind of floral, uh, I suppose it's not a wee bit, it's, it's actually got quite an intense floral note just on the front corners of the palate. And again, that would drop away if you aged this beer a little bit more. Around the front curve of the palate, there's a little bit of grassiness there, but again, you can detect some of the floral el uh, kind of elements in there. Let's focus on the fruity part of the beer then. So again, in that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a nice, really toasty, well-fired bread crusty note in there. Underneath that, you do, again, you can feel the sort of, what I suspect is the special bee malts there forming the base layer of the beer underneath the fruity side of things, and you can feel that the front part of your palate just dries out a wee bit the further um, forward into it you go, and I do like that. I do appreciate that about this beer. For sure, it's got a really nice, just kind of, um, a little bit the roastiness again. This is what I was talking about with Nair. That one of the, that having that roasty edge is one of the trademarks of this brewery. Absolutely. But yeah, on the fruity side of things, when you take this one in, it's got a nice little bit of just a raisiny sharpness to it. And at the back of that front third of your palate, you definitely get some of those kind of juicy, plummy notes coming out of it too. So yeah. At the back of that kind of, as I say, at the back of that front third of your tongue, you get those plummy notes. There's a little bit of raisiny sharpness kind of going on top of that. And as you move further forward, it gradually just kind of juices up a little bit. You get a few wee kind of figgy notes out of it. But then as you reach the kind of front half of that front third of your tongue, you get a little bit of a... Uh, you do get a wee bit of an almost, there's a tiny little bit of a black currant note there underneath, but I find that this beer is a little bit more, it's got a more sort of oily and slightly, it's got a wee, almost a wee tiny touch tart, um, blackberry type note coming out of it as well, which is really interesting. But yeah, the thing that really lingers into the aftertaste with this beer, you get some of the fruits out of it, of course, but then you get the nice kind of um, special beer, bread, you know, well-fired bread crusty sort of thing. And then you can feel uh, the coffee sitting there in this one too. Um, the vanilla, I think, it, it surprised me with this. The vanilla does take a bit of a back seat compared to a lot of the other things that are in this this beer, actually. Um, but I do remember with the other infix, the caramel wasn't too prominent in this, to be quite honest with you. Um, but in fairness, in the middle of your palate, you do get a wee tiny bit of brown sugar coming out of this beer. Like I say, it's kind of a toasty, caramelly sort of thing sitting there in the middle of the palate. But um, yeah, this is just a, it's a really interesting beer, this one, and I like how it, um, I do like how everything kind of pieces together in this for sure. So yeah, um, it's a really, it's a really nice one overall, this, and again, it lives up to the kind of the the high standards that Nair Bruin have always kind of held themselves to. So well done to Hannes once again for this. I've enjoyed this and I probably so I probably enjoyed it so much because it's been a while since I've had one of these beers. But yeah, solid stuff. Uh, in terms of the 
uh, the mouthfeel then to round this one off. Um, you know, this beer, it strikes me as being, you know, fairly slick, actually, which is quite interesting. It's not the thickest of Imperial Stouts you're going to come across, but then again, I think I can, you know, from memory, I would say the same about quite a lot of the Nerd Brewing beers. So this one is kind of, you know, middle of the road, full bodied. Um, carbonation is fairly smooth on this one. The beer overall just has a nice kind of slickness to it, a little bit of oiliness, but again, it's not a massively thick imperial stout quite a high bitterness on this one though i would think this is probably like 80 ibus you know it could even be pushing the 100 to be honest with you with all the coffee you know the the, the special b and then the hops are going to contribute to that as well so this is quite a high bitterness um stout this one but at the same time the smoothness the smoothness that it has is very very nice but the malt base like we say roasty backbone to it. it gets it smoothens out a little bit you start to get some sweetness kind of on top there but yeah the, the the malt base overall is kind of bitter and has a wee degree of sweetness to it as well but you've got some really nice kind of oily um fruity characters coming out of the beer as well um so yeah i like how um you know i do like how that um how that goes together in this one so i mean the, the fruity side of the beer has a wee bit of tartness to it it's got a nice kind of big oily character to it and I think that sort of balances out the beer um, really nicely as well and it sort of complements the coffee because the coffee does have a bit of fruitiness and a little bit of a citrusy character to it as well so yeah this th this beer I've just I've really enjoyed this one it's been nice to return to Nerd Brewing it's another solid solid beer from them and if you do get the chance to try this I'd highly recommend that you do it definitely strikes me as one of the slicker ones I've had from these guys all of their beers do have a bit of slickness to them but this one strikes me as being a little bit slicker than some of the others so um yeah let's leave it at that for this one an interesting beer for sure um so yeah this one was the infix uh, imperial milk stout uh, uh vanilla sorry vanilla macchiato edition at 10.5 percent abv from nerd brewing down in rosengord and malma lovely lovely beer this and i've really really enjoyed um I've really enjoyed reviewing this one for you. So um, yeah, awesome stuff from there, Boom. Once again, I look forward to seeing what their beer is next month because I think it's something, I think it's got coconut in it, if I remember rightly. So looking forward to that. But um, yeah, let's leave it there for this one. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are from there, Brewing. We will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the fairly near future. But uh, in the meantime, check out all my other Nerd reviews. You can check out my interview with Hannes as well. But I'll catch you guys on the next one. The Infix Vanilla Macchiato Edition from Nerd Brewing in Rosengord and Malma. Slanja, Skull, cheers.